WCNC TV Charlotte. This is Flashpoint, where power and politics collide and the tough questions get asked and answered. Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Flashpoint. I'm Bill McGinty filling in for Ben Thompson this week. Ben is enjoying some much-deserved time off. Joining me today, Charlotte City Council members Tark Bakari and Braxton Winston, and later Eric Spanberg from the Charlotte Business Journal is going to be stopping by as well. You know, we're talking the major story dominating the headlines this week here in the Queen City, the 2020 Republican National Convention and the status of Charlotte's bid for it. The RNC is expected to vote this coming week on whether or not to hold its convention here or out in Las Vegas. So to vote on the convention Charlotte City Council they're also going to be holding a meeting uh, we know that Mayor Vile Isles is calling a special meeting as I said that's going to be for the council on Monday but we know that support is anything but unanimous among the 11 members NBC Charlotte's Rad Berkey catches us up on the debate Mayor Vile Isles tried to gain support from the Democratic women of Mecklenburg County for her efforts to bring the Republican convention to Charlotte and what I would hope is that we would have the ability to showcase what's right about working together in government here in Charlotte. The mayor has said the economic impact of the convention is something that can't be ignored. While there had been little opposition earlier this year to the effort to bring the convention here, now, with less than a week before decision day, concern is mounting within the mayor's own Democratic Party. Two Democratic council members, Justin Harlow and Lawana Mayfield, have both said they will vote to reject it, and several other Democrats on the council remain undecided. Mayfield says her concern is President Trump's policies on minorities and immigration. My community is majority minority, and I represent District 3 as well as the entire city when I vote. And when we have members of our community that are in fear, I have to take that into consideration. After the mayor made her case last night, the Democratic women took a vote on support for the convention. The vote failed. All right, let's cut right to the chase. Do you guys know how you're going to vote at this special meeting? I don't think, uh, I, I think we know w what we feel. I think we have a big step left in our in our review of the contract language. And um, again, uh, uh, you know, there's been a lot of false narratives and information out there. When we say we need to review the contract language, it isn't what's in the contract and what does it say? It's we've been told through varying phases all the way up until lately, everything that's there verbally, as long as you've asked for that information or it's been relayed to you. We need to confirm what we've been told is accurate. So you're approaching this, at least for you, you're approaching this from a financial aspect, meaning is the city going to get everything the city needs to get in order to host this convention? Not, not just that. I mean, I, I, there's a lot of other things, which is why I'm a theoretical yes and a strong yes at this point. That is not economically, yes, we're going to have great impacts. This is also an opportunity for us to showcase this city and what we're all about and how we can handle in the most challenging of times these types of events. Just as we did for the DNC. Exactly. In 2012. Just as we do all the time. Correct. Well, at the time of this taping, we have not seen a contract at all. And we will see one this afternoon, which won't be the final contract. So I definitely can't judge what I haven't seen yet. But as I said a couple weeks ago, I'm considering everything. I'm considering especially the, 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 the communications that I'm getting from my community at large. I am an at-large member, and I represent right. the entire city and all 800,000-plus 800, of folks. And a lot of folks have, have weighed in on, on all different sides. What are they saying? Uh, well, they are, it, it's the entire spectrum. You know, you have people that say they really want it, people that say they really don't want it, some people that are concerned um, and, and fearful for what can happen, and some people just don't think the politics match. Um, but, again, it's, it's, it, it, when I'm looking at the correspondence, sometimes I'm seeing people that identify as conservative Republicans saying that they don't want this here. Then I'm seeing people that identify as liberal Democrats saying, bring it, bring it. Uh, for several different reasons. Um, so I hope the, the community will continue uh, this conversation up until uh, Monday at 2 o'clock, and we should have a pretty spirited uh, meeting, and w ultimately we'll f figure out uh, whether we'll do this or not. So if I had to put you both on the spot, would you both be a yes vote, we want the convention? Would you commit to that now? I would not commit to that right now. Is it because of Donald Trump being the candidate, or is it because of some problems you have with the contract and how the city's going to fare? So is it politics related, or is it contract related? It's because I don't know if this is the best choice, best thing for the city to be doing right now. Is it because Donald Trump's the candidate? That is a very, that is a very big part of, part of it. Um, I think that if this was a, a different candidate, I, I think there would definitely be people opposed to this. Um, but I, I, I don't think I would oppose this if this was Mitt Romney that was at the top of the ticket. No. What if there's a different candidate? 
Uh, because no one has come out and said whether or not there's going to be a challenge point. yet. I great mean, point. we're all assuming Donald Trump's going to be the candidate, but he hasn't committed one way or the other whether he's going to run in 2020. And and uh, if he doesn't, that might open the field for a variety of different candidates. You could switch parties in that amount of time and literally run for uh, president as a Republican. The, the president of the United States remains the head of the political party, and right. he will. From, so at this point, your vote is based on assuming that he's going to be the candidate. It, it is. It is a strong part of the, the consideration um, that, that I'm making. Um, um, in, in terms of where my vote will go. Do you have any problems with him being the candidate? No, 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 I don't, because it's irrelevant in this debate. It is absolutely irrelevant in this debate, not just because the reason I said uh, earlier many times this week of he is one man who is obviously an important part of all of this, but this is a party with millions and millions of people, and it's their convention, too. And to be honest, you know, we, we've been at it all week, and the main debate point of a lot of the people who are strongly opposed to this is we uh, are opposed to this present divisive rhetoric. Uh, the word bigot has been used many times, in including by, by my colleague here. And that prompted me to, again, look back at that definition of bigot and say, someone who is intolerant of other people's views and opinions, well... That's everybody. Th that's everybody. And how can you make a, a decision against an economic boom to our city like this citing bigotry when it's literally bigotry that is the premise of that argument. I can't see how that, that's possible. Uh, America has a way of washing things that are, are bad and evil um, away you are by, right. by, 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 by using uh, the, the, the veneer of economic impact. And I think that's uh, time and time again, and I think that's what we're trying to do with this president right here. It's more than rhetoric. It's actions. It's divisiveness that's tearing up not just this country, but this world. So let me, let me ask you this then. Because I, I do agree with that tenet somewhat, but if we vote yes for this and we move forward, wouldn't it be better for us to have this in our own backyard and rather than whitewash it or sweep it under the rug, we continue, you and I, but the rest of the city, to have this dialogue in a productive manner for two years leading up to it and see what we can actually solve, you, you, not sweep under the rug. I, I com you know what? I will say I completely agree with that. And as one of the, the things that I'm considering, again, as, as I make th this decision, um, I think it would be a very good thing if the people of Charlotte, I think the people of Charlotte would uh, face this president head up. But I thought it would be irresponsible of me to make that decision without getting the input from the community to say we are still healing from September 2016. And for me to just say that Charlotte, this is your duty to do this in two years, uh, with, without consulting the people that are going to host this thing, I think would have been an irresponsible uh, leader uh, upon myself. Well, the mayor came out almost immediately and said, we want this convention. Yeah, I, I, and so I need to say two quick things. One on that, there's another false narrative in there that I really need to correct for the city to understand. The mayor came out after, not, not for herself or for the GOP, she came out um, as in her role after having many conversations with us. So anyone who's pushing the narrative of the mayor's out on an island doing this and what, what's going on, absolutely not. She has been so uh, um, uh, open in. and plugged yeah. in the whole time. And that vote of the Democratic women, uh, while it's being said, the Democratic women are getting, first of all, that is one very specific side of our community. And two, it was a close vote. It was 30 to 21. So even with that group on within that the Democratic side, women, within the Democratic women, How it is you know not that? as divided. You, right there. I, you know what? I have little birdies that float around here and tell me, Tark, here's a piece of information. Fake news? Fake news. Right. So but, how do you react? Now, you were surprised by that, <laughs> that, it would be th that it would be that close. Well, I've heard that, that, that I've heard that it wasn't that close. That, 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 honestly, that's, that, that's what I heard. I heard that it wasn't close at all. There was some wrangling about um, uh, uh, procedure. But again, I, th that's secondhand news. I wasn't there for the vote, so I can't. I well, neither was I. So again, if my stat is wrong, uh, I, I have a very, very trusted source that told me that. But the, the, the one other thing I want to say to you is you mentioned September 2016. And clearly, that is part of your story and, and your rise to, to be sitting here right now, and it's a great story. How, can you also not agree, not just on the dialogue point we agreed on a minute ago, but also that we have not fully solved our problems and healed our community and learned our lessons from 2016? You agree with that? I totally agree with so, that. Rather than wait around, and you and I are working with many others on, on doing just that, rather than wait around for that flashpoint to go off again, why not schedule it now? And why not work towards a deadline that we can control and say, you know what, this could be dangerous, but we're not going to quiver in the corner. We're all going to stand up, unify, and go after it. You mean, dang you mean dangerous to it. have the convention? Dangerous how? 
Oh, one of the big narratives against this is we don't want to invite protests and well, riots and, and everyone into well, our. I'm, into I'm our glad community. you brought that up because I did a little bit of research, and the last time there, there there were major problems at a convention was 2008, and both cities had problems. It was in St. Paul and it was in Denver, the the DNC and the RNC. Mm -hmm. They were they were were close to uh, uh, almost a thousand arrests between between the two cities, but in in 2012 when it was in Tampa, the RNC, when the DNC was here, there were less than 30 arrests between the two cities. So it seems like security... Well, it be, it, it's less security if you look back on history. It's times of conflict, between yes, the, exactly. domestic conflict within exactly. the United States of America. Um, and you look at 1968, you look in 2008 coming out, out of the Bush years, you look in, in the early 90s, and you look at different times, that, that, that that's what happens. This is, these are the things you expect at, at, at political conventions. And when you go back to 2016, you're right, I was there. Um, it might be a good story or whatever, but I do know that it was trauma. It was real trauma that 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 I I experienced. It was trauma that my family experienced. It was trauma uh, that the people, all the people out in the street, from the police I think officers, the entire city, experienced to the trauma. entire city, um, and 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 that's a difficult thing to deal with. And I I, I don't think it's it's it's, it's it, it it boils down to a matter of being brave or not. I think the people of Charlotte have shown time and time again that we are brave people. It is the willingness as, as a leader yes. to bring th that trauma to the forefront uh, with or without. Or the willingness of, of a community to get out of your comfort zone in a tale of two cities and have that conversation. Yeah, Councilman, we're gonna have to t table this for just two minutes. We're gonna take a quick break, we'll be right back.